Hi, I'm Glenn. Happy 2023. I will be your, okay, I will not be your instructor. I will be your coach. I will be your coach, not instructor this, not instructor for your class this semester. I will be your coach for your team this game. What's up with that? Uh, why coach instead of instructor, professor, teacher, something like that? Very simple. I am not on the field. You are. This is not about my race to run. This is about your race to run. Like many coaches, I've been on the field before and I will give you all the help, all of the value of my experience, if it is valuable, uh, that I can to assist you, encourage you, help you through things. But at the end of the day, you're on the field. It's your race to run. It's your career to build. I'm the coach on the sideline, but you're on the field. Uh, doing your best. Why team instead of class? Because I hope you will be a team. Honestly, most semesters, I spend the whole semester begging people to follow each other on Instagram. By the time we get to the end of the semester, half the class still hasn't done it. It's crazy. I shouldn't even have to say it. I should never even have to bring it up. You should just automatically follow every classmate you've got and not just follow, not just like, not just leave awesome work, you rock comments, but truly take more than one second and look at your classmate, teammate, work. See what's going on. See if you can have an insight into what might help them. Take a look at the previous work. Is this piece going further in the direction they've been following or did they make a turn and they're pursuing something new? Leave substantive, insightful comments. Hopefully, your teammates, your classmates will do the same for you. Um, even if they don't, it's worth being the person who gives 110%, being the person who develops a reputation for enthusiasm, energy, dedication, all of these things. I don't know if you saw the, I guess it was last year, the HBO series Winning Time about the Lakers of the 1980s. There's a scene where Magic is all alone on the court, all alone inside the huge forum in Inglewood. He's the only person there uh, practicing all by himself. He's actually in that scene, he's trying to teach himself how to do a sky hook. And he plays for a while. And at some point, Kareem walks by and says, what are you doing? And uh, through the journey of that, at least the show version, um, Magic has just had this enormous enthusiasm. Kareem isn't sure what to do with it. He's not sure about him. But they kind of come to understand each other over time. And there, there's an earlier scene where Kareem has a meal with Magic's dad and comes to understand him even better. And so, you know, they talk on the court and Kareem ends up teaching Magic how to do a sky hook. So be Magic, you know, be more dedicated than anyone else. Put more time in than anyone else. Bring people to practice with you if you can, but be alone on the court if you have to. And if you put enough time in, sooner or later, Kareem just might walk by and teach you how to do a sky hook. Okay, so I'm the coach for your team this, not semester, but game. Um, we ha you'll be developing your career and your portfolio for the rest of your life, most likely. But we have a 16-week window to do everything we can to focus those career plans and to help you transition from your student hat to your professional hat. So let's be artists. Uh, starting today, never call yourself a student. We're not denying that you went to school. We're not denying that you were in the School of Art at Long Beach State. We're proud of that. But you're, who you are is not, I am a student, I take classes. Because if I'm the curator at a gallery, if I'm the HR director at an animation studio, if I'm the creative director at an ad agency, if I'm uh, the art buyer who commissions illustrations at a children's book publisher, if I'm getting married and I need a wedding photographer, none of those people are looking for student who takes classes. They are looking for professional who works in a specific area of art. Um, you're not claiming to, ha if you're 20-something now, most of you probably are 20-something, some might be older, um, 
you're not claiming to have 20 years experience, that's fine, you're a young emerging artist, but you are a working professional, so call yourself that. So we're no longer student, we are animator, uh, contemporary California abstraction painter, art director, graphic designer, photographer, illustrator, etc. Don't call yourself a studio artist. Nobody outside the School of Art knows what that means. You need to be specific. If you think about engineering, um, there's so many jobs for engineers, but there are no jobs for engineer. If I'm building a bridge and I need that to not fall down and kill people, uh, then what I need is a civil engineer. If you're an uh, electrical engineer, you can't help me. If I'm designing a circuit, I need an electrical engineer. A civil engineer is useless. Lots and lots of engineers, chemical engineers, aerospace engineers, the list goes on forever. Lots of work for all of them. No work for somebody called just engineer. Same for us. People, you, you know, if I'm an ad agency, I don't say go find me an artist and somebody brings a painter in and I say, you know, have you ever used Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, and they say, no, I'm a painter, right? So be specific. You're not a student, you're an artist. You're not a studio artist, you're a specific type of artist. What type are you? Obviously, that's up to you. Um, a quarter or less of you probably have a very clear idea of what kind of artist you are. A, a good two-thirds to three-quarters of you probably aren't sure. Uh, you might think, well, I kind of like to get into art education. Awesome. Uh, but I'd also like to show my work in a, my ceramics work in a gallery. Awesome. Uh, and, you know, I heard about this internship at the Broad to learn to be a preparator. I kind of am really interested in applying for that internship. Awesome. And I really would like to start teaching fiber art workshops. Okay, you just told me four awesome things, and they are awesome. Any one of them would be a great career. I don't think it's possible to do all four at the same time. And I think by trying to do four or three or even two things at once, you're making it more likely that you're going to end up having no art career at all. Um, I, I don't, I've never even tried to juggle four balls. I'm learning to do three. But when you're, when you're keeping these things in the air, <laughs> when you're keeping too many balls in the air, it's like really a lot of work. And when you try to tell somebody what you're doing, it's like hard to explain and they, these things fall on the ground at some point. Um, when you have one ball, when you say, this is what I do, it's very easy to explain to somebody, this is what I do. Even more important than being able to communicate quickly and clearly and you know, concisely and compellingly to someone what you do is when I get up in the morning, oh, should I make a painting today? Or should I post flyers about my fiber art workshops today? Or should I send my resume to some animation studios today? Or, or, you're like a deer in the headlights. You don't know what's going on and it's just, it's too much. Once you can focus and say, this is what I do, maybe not for the rest of my life, but this is what I'm committed to for maybe five years. You get up in the morning, you know exactly what you have to do. You're on a mission and the clarity it gives yourself, instead of deer in the headlights, now it's laser focus on a specific career. So I really want to encourage you to focus. Um, one of the first things we'll do is make a five-year plan. We will look at where you'd like to be career-wise in each of the next five years. Equally importantly, we will look at money, income, and outgo. What's it going to cost to live? How many paintings are you going to have to sell? How many graphic design clients? How many weddings are you going to have to photograph? How much is this animation studio going to pay you? Um, do you want to live in Downey in a house with four roommates? Or do you and your partner and your two kids want to have a house by the beach and drive Mercedes? Because those two different lifestyles, neither one is better, neither one is worse, neither one is right, neither one is wrong, but those two different lifestyles have phenomenally different costs and therefore phenomenally different amounts of income that you're going to need. So thinking about what would I like for myself in the next five years um, is priceless to help you kind of navigate what makes sense. Let me say, this stuff 
can be stressful. Uh, we've been taking classes and they keep you super busy. It's a lot of work. It can be challenging. All of the, the technique that you've developed, all of the concepts you've developed, all the aesthetics you've explored, all of that has been a lot of work. You've done a lot. Go you. Um, but now moving from that and thinking about all this life stuff and money and careers and uh, probably two-thirds or three-quarters of the class we're introverts and so having to go out and network and connect is not fun or comfortable and having to mess around on computers some of you will be computer types but most of you probably won't and that doesn't that may not sound like your favorite thing well first you know as your coach I hope that I can make your life easier not harder and and I, I think Honestly, for most of the students I've had in, in this class in the past five years, the more we talk, the better they feel. So, if, so we have three official one-to-one -one meetups. Um, be sure to jump on the scheduling page and grab one of those. But you're not limited to three. That's just the official. We can talk by email or we can hop on Zoom anytime. Uh, if you're feeling stressed, let's hop on Zoom and talk about it. Uh, in my experience, Yes, your entire life and your career and all of that, I mean, that is heavy stuff and it's not surprising one might be stressed. But in my experience, when you put everything together, well, I got to deal with this and I got to deal with this and I got to deal with this and I got to deal with this. You put everything together, you kind of make this huge mountain, this boulder that seems just dedicated to smashing you like an insect. I think putting everything together and saying, how can I possibly deal with all this is, is a mistake, is not the best way to do it. I think exactly the opposite. Don't put it all together and say, there's so much facing me. Try to take it all apart. What are the pieces? What are the smallest little chunks? What can I accomplish this day or this week or this year, whatever the time period it might take to do something, but try to make small Try to take big things apart and make them small. They tend to be much less intimidating, much less oppressive. Um, in Silicon Valley, they have a, a slogan, fail early and often. And what that means is, you know, don't try to make this gargantuan product that when you finally roll it out, it turns out nobody actually wants it anyway. Get uh, an MVP, a minimum viable product, and put that out and see what happens. Maybe the use case for your thing will be different than you thought. It almost always is. For everything that anybody's ever invented in history, usually uh, successful things don't get used for what the inventor first thought they were. So get it out there and don't do this gargantuan thing. The fail early and often idea is if you're, if you're jumping a high bar of your career and you move it up just a little bit every time you clear it, uh, you're, gonna you're gonna succeed most of the time and when you do miss, that's okay, just back up and try it again. And if you miss, it's no big deal. And if you clear it, you can move it another inch higher and just slowly inch it up. Don't put the bar way up here and then like just, I'm working, I'm working. I'm gonna try that jump in, in three months. You know, no, like jump every day, but the increment should be small. Missing a low jump is no big deal. You learn from it, it's, as, it's equal or more valuable than, than clearing it. True failure, missing something big like you land on the moon and you have no way to get home or your marriage ends, these things are devastating. We would definitely like to avoid huge failures, but don't be afraid to try stuff as small an increment as you can and see what happens. Okay, that's a lot of kind of rambling for me. We'll be into more details. I'll see you on Monday and we'll kind of talk through things. Uh, but in addition to everything I've said so far, I just want to repeat that last point that while there is a lot to do, there is a lot to think about, and if you think you have four careers, I'm going to encourage you to focus on one, but as much as anything else, I really hope, serious as this stuff can be, I hope you don't stress out too much, and I hope that the avalanche of, of questions that I might be asking and material I might be throwing your way doesn't stress you out, please, you know, just ask me to jump on Zoom anytime and let's talk about things. Um, being stressed out is not helpful. It's no fun and you actually perform worse. So uh, let's try to make it painless. Let's try to be realistic about things. Uh, real quick note, um, the majority of the class I know is going to want to 
build an art career if you can, and you can. Uh, so let's do that. But we might have one or two people who already know that you're not looking to have an art career. We might have one or two people who might want an art career someday, but the stress of school, life, getting through your other classes, COVID, you name it, you are just not prepared. You just do not have the bandwidth to deal with all that this semester. All of that is okay. This class is designed to meet you where you are and help you do whatever you'd like to do. So if I'm too energetic and too career buildy and, and you're overwhelmed, let's talk about that. We will find a place that works for you. I'm not here to stress anyone out. I'm not here to make anybody's life miserable. You are never here to jump through hoops to make Glenn happy. Making me happy is the least important thing in the entire world. We're here to build your career, whatever you want that career to be. So let's jump in and be magic, do your best. Uh, try not to stress, but try to do as much as you can. And let's see what we can develop. Good luck.